In spring training of the 2020 MLB season, just a week before the pandemic flipped everything we knew totally on its head, I was fortunate enough to have been invited with some other creators to spend an all-access day with the Miami Marlins. In the midst of all the great experiences we did have, interviewing a future Cy Young winner, hitting in their batting cages, and spending the game in their dugout, there was also one what-if opportunity. See. We were told that one player we didn't get to interview had already told the Marlins staff in advance he'd chat with us during his downtime. Problem was, it seemed he didn't have any downtime. The guy was working, hitting in the cages for the entire morning while we were filming content. But once I saw him play in the game, I was glued to him. He played with Flash, passion, and excitement before ever even making his big league debut. And I knew for a fact he was putting in ample work off the field. Saw it with my own two eyes. This was my introduction to Jazz Chisholm Jr. And not long after, the world got theirs. Jazz, it's a high fly ball, this one deep to right field, and that is into the upper deck! Jazz Chisholm Jr. three run bomb! From the time he first broke into the big leagues, it was unbelievably obvious that his standout trait was that he was fun, both in terms of his style of play and his personality. In terms of actual baseball tools, Jazz had the three things that get you noticed the quickest. He could hit home runs, he runs extremely fast, and he could make plenty of highlight reel plays with his glove. And he was off to some start in his first month as an everyday player. Sure, his statistical game for the season as a whole was still very rough around the edges, but when Derek Jeter allows you to wear his number for your first opening day, those are some expectations right there. But what Jazz does have that drew me to him right away is palpable energy. My god, he is just so much fun. He wears really cool custom cleats, same thing with gloves too. He's not shy about expressing himself with different colored hairstyles. He smiles all over the field. He makes opposing pitchers give him piggyback rides. He wears shirts of cartoon drawings of himself on them. It's basically impossible for him not to look cool on camera. He radiated an energy totally unique to himself and that caught on. Everyone talks about aura. Jazz has aura, plain and simple. I think Jazz, if he does his part playing well on the field, has a chance to be someone who transcends baseball. He finds so many new and unique ways to have fun, and people recognize that from the beginning. His existence just looked like he was having a great time. And slowly but surely, the performance caught up. He earned the honor of being an all-star in his second season, the first ever all-star from the Bahamas in MLB history, which being from the Bahamas is also something Jazz is incredibly proud of, and he's not shy of embracing that part of himself. Becoming an all-star was the product of him seeing much better peripherals on his batted ball stats too. He was finally coming into his own as a superstar player, until he got hurt. A back injury knocked him out for the entire second half of the season, and health was a struggle for him in 2023 as well. But what wasn't as much of a struggle was his performance when he was on the field. At the time of writing this, his last 162 games played, which amounts to one full MLB regular season, he's gone well over 30-30 in home runs and stolen bases with 100 RBI, and now, amazingly, good play in center field. Oh yeah. The Marlins saw Jazz's athleticism in the infield, which is where all his defensive highlights have been so far in this video, and they said, hey, go play one of the hardest positions in baseball that you've never tried before from now on. And after looking really goofy and out of place out there to start off, he finished 2023 one of the better defensive outfielders in the league. He's uber talented, and so much fun to watch, even still, I can't drive that point home anymore. But. I probably will. He's got all that going for him, both in terms of his skill set and how much passion and positivity he radiates in games. Odds are, he'll never lose either of those qualities. But there was one catch when his star was shining brightest. He wasn't actually having any fun playing baseball. How could someone with all this going for them wind up admitting that they were miserable the entire time? Find out right after a word from our sponsor. 
Cold turkey might sound nice on a sandwich your mom makes you, but it's not a great way to try to give up a bad habit. Thanks to our sponsor, Fume, they look at bad habits in a different way. Instead of drastic, uncomfortable changes in bad habits, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. No electronics, no vapor, Fume is completely natural flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural flavors. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers plenty of stimulation which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking a bad habit. There's also a base that comes with it, launched this past January, which is a weighted stand to rest your Fume on when it's not in use with a magnet that keeps it attached, which is a great feature to never lose it, and you can do this with it. Whoa. I was most surprised by how nice it feels in your hand. It's well weighted, perfectly balanced, the real wood is really nice on your fingers too. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume makes things a lot easier. They've served over 150,000 customers with thousands of success stories, there's no reason one of those can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash starkraving or scan the QR code on screen and use code starkraving to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code starkraving to save an additional 10% off on your order today. Thank you Fume for sponsoring today's video. Back to the action. There has always been a bit of a power struggle in baseball. The old guard versus the new kids on the block. For much of baseball history, the old guard would typically outnumber any young player who would shock the system a little bit. Any young player who acted against baseball's unwritten code of ethics was swiftly dealt with by older players who took exception, and that went on basically without fail for well over a century. I mean, this is a sport where even in its early days there's record of a veteran player hitting a home run, a younger player greeting him in the dugout saying, nice hit, and the veteran responding, go to hell. So when I say that we are right at this moment, just barely entering the first era in baseball history where the younger guys seemingly outnumber the older guys, this is the first time that talk of unwritten rules has sort of taken a backseat. Until very recently, when Jazz Chisholm broke the silence of his experience of his first handful of years in the big leagues with the Miami Marlins on an episode of the Pivot Podcast. Well, I can tell you I hated my first three seasons in the big leagues, you'd think I lied. I hated 2020, I hated 2021, I hated 2022. All three of those seasons. You had vets that hate, hate what you do and who you are. I had that from day one of in the big leagues for three straight seasons. You're, this is your eighth year in the big leagues and you're worried about me? We don't even play the same position. Right. Your friend and I play the same position, but we don't. Right. So don't get it. Let your friend come. If your friend has a problem, let him come. Like, I don't have a problem talking to him too. You know what I mean? Like, I know I'm not the quiet kid on the field, but in the clubhouse, bro, I literally never talked to nobody until 2023. Because under the surface of Jazz bringing fun and electricity to the Marlins, as he described, very few of the Marlins actually supported what he was all about. He specifically named Starling Marte as the only veteran teammate of his who made the effort to be around him. And guess who Jazz gravitated towards at the 2022 All-Star Game? According to Jazz, most other veterans he played with openly took exception to the brand of baseball he's all about, regardless of what they would say publicly. The cool custom cleats I brought up? Someone cut up, one of my vets cut up my cleats, poured milk in my cleats, and threw them in the trash and said, those shoes are ugly, bro. Oh, Jazz hit two home runs in a June game against the Nationals in 2022. Two homers and six RBIs. Guess what? Before the game, they had a little old team meeting to decide what to do about Jazz. Because that's commonplace, especially for this meeting to end in the manager being like, what are you guys doing? He's not hurting anyone and he's playing well. What are you complaining about? The de facto captain of the Marlins tells you that you're the best guy on the team, gassing you up to try to boost your confidence even more, then complains about you behind your back to the manager. It seems so contradictory 
The deck being so unfairly stacked against him in his own clubhouse when what the baseball viewer sees is nothing but bliss. The duality of that energy and excitement on the field with calling the off the field the worst years of his life is just unfathomable. A dissonance so far beyond what he was channeling on the field. Throughout Jazz finally coming forward about being treated poorly by his veteran teammates, it was often heavily implied that one of the offenders was their de facto captain, Miguel Rojas. This was pretty upsetting to me, if I can level with you here. Rojas was someone who treated us extraordinarily well in that all-access day I brought up at the beginning. He's also treated my friends very well too in a number of different settings. And then seeing how he responded to the talk of what was going on with Jazz. You don't even know me. You don't even, you don't even know where I come from, you know? Let me tell you something. In a clubhouse, there's things that never should leave the clubhouse. If we want people to access to, to that information, we will let them be in the clubhouse. This all but confirms Jazz was telling the truth. Rojas's response was code for, yeah, this happened, but you should have just kept it to yourself. And I don't think that's a valid or professional response to what Jazz was describing. I was very disappointed to see how Rojas handled it, and it gave me more empathy for everything Jazz was talking about before. It's unbelievable that in a world where we're so quick to anoint flashy young stars in baseball because they make the game more fun, that arguably the most fun of them all was facing plenty of resentment from his own peers. It's highly unusual for word to get out about team meetings that took place only for veterans to be like, gee, how do we rein in our best player just because he's different than everyone else? That's really all this meeting was about. Jazz existing the way he did. I will disclose that I grew up a diehard Mets fan, but like people who knew me well made fun of me for being all over a division rival player during his rise to prominence. Jolly Olive once asked my dad when they met if he was quote, a closeted Marlins fan like his son. So I do have to be transparent and say that I'm a person who is a big jazz advocate, if that wasn't clear already. Do I agree with everything jazz does? Absolutely not. I think complaining about shadows during a losing streak, even if you're right, isn't exactly the most professional thing to do in a loss. I think doubling down on the Trevor Williams is not a good pitcher take during another interview, even if you admit he's the pitcher you struggle the most with, isn't a great look. It's not even like he's a good pitcher, like, he kind of sucks. Like, like, if you look, watch him pitch, uh -huh. he's not good. Exactly. What does he play first? The Nationals, like... But something everyone who detracts from Jazz saying he's just a flamboyant baby doesn't understand is that all that comes from a place of genuine passion for baseball. His grandmother played softball well into her 50s. I just feel, I just feel blessed to get the skills that she had and then some, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she just blessed me with the skills and I, like, my dad had super crazy athleticism and everything, my grandfather, everybody was really athletic, so I'm just glad that she took me into the sport, got me loving it, and I just love to do it every day, especially from watching her doing it before me. And he was around greatness young. He often tells a story that Michael Jordan turned him down for an autograph as a kid in the Bahamas by saying, make me want your autograph. And from the time he's entered MLB, Jazz has been very open about his goal. He wants to be a Hall of Famer. He views himself as a failure if he's not, and he's doing everything he can to work and learn towards that. It is still impressive that at least from the outside looking in, he is cleaning up his game a lot with more reps and experience. He's given reasonable hope to fans that with time and health, he may not have had his best seasons quite yet. But what I definitely hope he hasn't shown the best of yet is his showmanship. Because, again, that has come from a place of passion that few have replicated. There's two pieces of having showmanship most people typically agree make it showmanship and not arrogance. Number one is, simply, being able to back it up. Jazz has proven he's good. Only three players who have gone 30-30 in their last 162 games have more home runs plus stolen bases than him. Julio Rodriguez, Bobby Witt Jr., and Ronald Acuna Jr. All that he really needs to do to really prove he's a star is maintain that for a full healthy season on a decent Marlins team. Number two is the showmanship being authentic. 
It's like I said in my video about Jose Lima. Jose Lima was flashy and emotional on the field because he was exactly like that in real life. So people mostly understood and didn't give pushback on how he played the game differently. Jazz is also a naturally enthusiastic and emotional person, but yet people in his own clubhouse didn't seem to recognize that these qualities were just translating to his baseball image the way fans understood it enough to make him a choice for the MLB The Show cover athlete. He talks a lot about coming from a background where, in sports, it's very common to show emotion for the game and the success you're blessed enough to have. He's fine with getting Euro-stepped on back by pitchers who strike him out when he does it to them on home runs. He wants to hit a home run off one of the most productive pitchers in baseball that he just so happened to have been traded for to make that trade when he got to the Marlins even more of a friendly rivalry, even if baby steps are needed to get there. This is the kind of thing I enjoy in baseball when it's rooted in respect for the game. You may not know it just looking at Jazz from a surface level approach, but that's really what this is all about. It's tough not to respect the game when your grandmother who knows more than a thing or two about playing the game is going to give you an earful about your performance if you don't. He pays it forward with the fans as well with a profile on him in The Athletic highlighting that he's often the last one to leave the dugout after games to be sure he can sign some autographs. You know, like MJ didn't do that one time. He respects the pitchers he's facing when they defy physics, with amazingly complicated and nasty pitches. That's exactly why he wants to hit home runs off them and succumb to the excitement of somehow demolishing this into the sky. And I think in a misguided way, he was kind of giving props to Trevor Williams for not pitching like these guys and still giving Jazz fits at the plate, even if his phrasing was kind of rough. Every time I face him, it's crazy. Like, I have the most respect for him. Like, I'm not saying he sucks. And I do believe he's one of the few guys in baseball capable of using all of this aura to grow the sport in the entire world. I mean, given his Bahamian origins, he actually has eligibility to play for England in the next WBC. And I bet our friends from across the pond would like baseball a lot more seeing Jazz do his thing representing the UK. I wouldn't call this flash in baseball. I'm excited to see where Jazz goes from here. He does have to stick the landing on the field and play high-level baseball to fully achieve his potential. And I have faith that that's still within the realm of possibility for him. And now that he's comfortable both in the box and the clubhouse, much more so these days than ever before in his career, I'm hopeful the world finally gets to notice one of the players I've followed the closest over the years because he's just so easy and enjoyable to watch. If I had one message to Jazz throughout all of this, I would say, never lose that.